All right, in this example, I want to go ahead and just finish things off and show you how to do a templated class since we have templated functions. So here's a template. And just to refresh on C++, it looks pretty similar to the functions that we looked at before. Instead, this time we've got template, but the actual data type that we're going to be replacing is here, T. And we can actually replace as many of these as we want. So we could have class uh, T2, class T3, et cetera, for all the data types that we want to change. And this is one reason why developers will sometimes be hesitant to make classes, because again, if I have different permutations of those data types that could be created, this could generate a lot of code. So use as needed. With any good tool, you need to figure out the right use case and when is the right time to use that tool. So anyway, here's our uh, template, and you'll see I have a very just generic component class here where we can set some data and then retrieve that data. And whatever the type is, that's the substitution here. And that type of data is stored. Okay. Uh, so really quick, just to demonstrate the usage of this, I've instantiated a template here of the int type for this component. And it's just called an integer component. It's going to set the data to 5 and then retrieve that data here. Then I'm going to do the same thing again with a string here. And for our string component, set it to some string, and then appropriately retrieve that data again. So let's go ahead and just compile this. I'll use uh, Clang this time, CPP, template. And we can see that our component, the same overall uh, class, but just the fields or the member variables are templated. Then we can use this on. Uh, different types of data, we can operate whatever these uh, actions are in our class. Okay, that's what we want to wrap. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump us over here. And let's go ahead and open up a library. This is what we want to wrap in PyBind. So this is the exact same class here that I had before. I just want to show you how to do this in PyBind. So what's going to be new here this time is we're going to have to instantiate the particular types uh, for this component that we want to expose. Again, here's an int version, and then for set data within the angle brackets, the int here. Again, you can imagine how this could get quite large if we had lots of fields here. But in most cases, you know, if we just have one here, or maybe two, it's it's okay. So anyway, I'm just going to show you how to um, sort of set this up. So again, I've got my uh, build script here. Uh, I'll show it's the same ones that are used in the first lessons in this playlist. If you want to take those, so here's for the Unix system. I uh, just had to build things. Let me go ahead and just put it so it's on one screen, uh, just so you can get a look. And uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and build this. And we'll see that we have our uh, library.so here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and build this uh, from our library so. And I'm just going to run Python 3, import in our component, or rather the library. Excuse me. And if we want, we can see what's in this library. So we should see that there is a component here. And it has a version for getting data and setting data that takes in an int and returns an int. Okay, That's how we know it's been used. Uh, now let me show just a few examples of how to properly use this. So let's see, component one, if I just set it equal to component, um, it's going to complain because, again, uh, it's in the library here. Uh, and the empty parentheses, C1, uh, let's set the data to 5, and this works fine here. Okay, uh, And let's actually just do C1, uh, get data, and we get 5 back. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So we have one uh, type here. Um, again, if we try with something like this, we're going to get to an error here. It's going to tell us, well, it doesn't really understand 5.0. Uh, because in Python, it normally it would convert um, or, or cast this perhaps to uh, a value or lower it. But remember, we're making a, a library call here, some um, foreign function that's coming in from our library. And it only knows how to work on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and extend our library here just a little bit. Let's go ahead and do it with something a little bit more obscure with, uh, say, a string. I'm just going to copy this, paste it in. And let's say we want our components to be available uh, with standard string. So let's go ahead and just take a moment to do this uh, substitution. I'm going to do it one at a time just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, yes, it's a little bit painful. I believe there are probably some uh, ways you could use PyBind to do this faster, especially if you have lots of types. Um, 
again, if you have uh, multiple uh, type classes here, I think there's a way you can do it uh, faster. So if someone figures that out, please um, send me a message or comment. Uh, but anyway, that should uh, extend our template. So now we can use it with strings and integers. Let's go ahead and solve. We have to rebuild this. And it looks like no errors. And let's go ahead and run this in Python 3 for our library. And let's see, it says import error, cannot initialize type component, an object with a name is already defined. Since this is a naming conflict, one thing we can immediately do is say, well, what do we want here? Maybe we can have component uh, int and then component string here for the second data type. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. I to rebuild. And if I rerun this, let's see, point six, import our library. And then let's take a look at our library just to see what's going on here. And it looks like we do have component int here that's defined. And if I scroll down a little bit here, I have a component string. This might be one solution that's okay for us to use. And uh, let's go ahead and just test it out. Library dot component string. And let's go ahead and set the data. That's data here. Get data. And there we go. So anyway, this could be one way to resolve our situation. Again, um, we could try some other things. Sometimes it's worth uh, playing around with PyBind. Because it would be nice if we could just sort of send in all of these uh, functions and it would sort of uh, resolve itself. But again, uh, this is going to be a little bit weird because it doesn't know what the uh, type is and we're doing it for the particular um, component here. So unless somebody knows, there are probably some uh, cleaner solutions to um, automatically generate some of this code. So again, if it has any ideas, feel free to uh, submit in the comments, but otherwise this is an easy way to get your interface into your uh, Python code. And I suppose at one end, you know exactly the data type that you're using, which could be useful because that's really the only data type that uh, allowed to use uh, when you're making these calls in Python anyways, as we've seen before, because um, if we try something even such as, um, you know, simple as this, uh, we're gonna get an error, type error. So we're gonna expect a string, a float. It's not gonna do that automatic uh, conversion. Again, there's ways probably to do it um, by either passing in Python types instead of the C++ ones, but I'll have to look into it 